What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I got a super awesome video for you guys because today we're talking all about the RED Komodo 6K. And I really love this camera because lately, I've been doing a ton of shoots lately. I've been doing a lot of spec ads, really cool video portraits with this camera. And lately, I've just been really trying to push this camera to the test and really understand it to the best of my ability. And I feel like these past few months, I've really accomplished that. I've done a ton of shoots with this. I've done a lot of color grading, editing, and I feel like I'm really finally starting to understand the power of the RED Komodo and why it's different to cameras like the A7S III, the FX3, and any of those Sony cameras, mirrorless cameras. And basically this video is dedicated to why I love the RED Komodo and why I think as a cinematographer, it's really important to buy a true cinema camera instead of continuing to shoot with just regular mirrorless bodies like the A7 III, FX3, Canons, all that stuff. So if you're into that content, stay tuned for this video because we're gonna go over all the really awesome features of this camera and why I really think this is a great investment even in 2023. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right guys, so first we're gonna go over some of the features of the RED Komodo that make it a really fun camera to shoot with and also work with in post. So firstly, we're gonna talk about shutter angle. And I think shutter angle is really important because shutter angle is only offered on true cinema cameras. Even on cameras like the FX3 or Sony A7S III, which are supposed to be mainly video cameras, they don't have this feature. And I think this feature is extremely important because when you're doing run and gun shoots, documentary shoots, any kind of shoots like that, you're always gonna be switching frame rates from usually 24 frames to 60 frames. And you don't have to worry about always changing your shutter speed. So on the Komodo, you're able to select 180 degrees shutter. And basically what that means is the camera is always going to automatically double your frame rate in the shutter speed. So for example, if I'm shooting at 24 frames, it's gonna automatically set my shutter speed to one over 50. And also if I'm shooting at 60 frames, it's automatically gonna double that and make it into 100 over 120 basically. And that's really important because when you're on these types of fast shoots, you don't always have time and you don't always have the attention to always be switching your shutter speed and because there's so many things to think about when you're on set. So I think that's really helpful. All right guys, so another reason why I really enjoy shooting on the RED Komodo 6K is because basically it's a manual focus camera. Although it does offer autofocus, which is still in beta, it is not really that trustworthy and it only really works with the native Canon lenses. And I really enjoy shooting on the Sigma 18 35 and the autofocus does not work on that lens. So I really enjoy shooting manual focus because it really requires you to be locked in. When you're operating and pulling your own focus, it's just a new kind of fun that you can't really describe unless you try it because Honestly, the past few years, I've been shooting on the A7 III and the 6600, which have amazing autofocus. And although those are great for YouTube, weddings, and that kind of stuff, this past few months, I really wanna step up my cinematography and I really wanna take advantage of the 6K. And by pulling my own manual focus, it's just a lot more fun, you know? Like when you're on set and when you're shooting, like you kind of get into this zone that you can't really describe compared to autofocus. Like you really are locked in you are really kind of immersed into your shot and you really do have to stay sharp because if you don't, the shot's basically gonna be ruined. But I think it is really fun because it teaches you a lot about f-stops as well. Like when you're shooting on Sony, it really doesn't matter what f-stop you're shooting because the autofocus is so good. But when you're shooting on something like this and you're shooting at 1.8, you really do have to keep in mind like how much your subject is moving, um, whether they're moving back and forth or how much bokeh you want. And it's just really, cool because it feels like you're really in control when you're shooting manual focus. So for that reason, I really enjoy shooting on the RED Komodo 6K. Next, we're gonna talk about the global shutter. And I know a ton of people talk about this already on YouTube, but I really think it's awesome because I fly this camera a lot on my RS2 and I think it's really awesome. And a lot of people say like, oh yeah, don't get the RED Komodo. There's no image stabilization. And a lot of noobs and a lot of green people on YouTube they're always like, oh yeah, Sony's better because it has active stabilization, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, when you think about it, most true cinema cameras don't have IBIS. They don't have inbuilt stabilization. But honestly, with the RED Komodo and the global shutter, I really like the movement you get on this camera. So like I said earlier, I mostly fly on the RS2 and I always really like the results. I mean, the footage is always extremely super smooth. And lately, I've been doing a ton of handheld footage and I really like the way this footage looks, like 4K60, slowed down, uh, just handheld because I don't know, it's really hard to describe, but with the global shutter, when you're kind of panning around and you get this really nice natural feel to it, it feels really cinematic. It doesn't feel too shaky. 
it's like a really nice stabilized handheld feeling. So I really like that about the Red Komodo and no other cinema cameras for this price point really offers that feature on the market. So for that reason, I really like the Red Komodo as well. All right, next, we're gonna talk about the monitoring solutions you need for the Red Komodo 6K. So as you can see, it has this tiny screen right here. And although it's comparable to the size of Sony cameras, it's really important that you get an external monitor when you're shooting with this camera. As I mentioned earlier, it's a manual focus camera, so you really need a nice big monitor to judge your focus, judge exposure, all that good stuff. And I really like shooting on reds because when you see the image on your little five inch monitor to seven inch monitor, it looks so cinematic and it really keeps you inspired. Like when I'm shooting on my Sony's, the image looks kind of stale, looks kind of flat. And a lot of the times I kind of lose inspiration shooting on Sony. And that's the main reason why I upgraded to red because when you're shooting with this, the colors look just so great on the monitor. It literally feels like you're making a movie right there. And by having a nice little seven inch or five inch, it just makes shooting a lot more fun because it keeps you so inspired by seeing the image right here. It already has the red LED built in and it just looks so great. The colors are so rich. They feel really nice and cinematic. It has a really nice natural grain to it. it has a really nice textured look. So for that reason, I really love shooting with the Komodo because it just keeps you so inspired when you're on set. All right, next, let's talk about media for the Red Komodo 6K. As you can see, it has one little slot here for one CFast. And right here is the Angel Bird one terabout CFast. And although these are really expensive, this is about $600. I think it's a really good system for the Komodo because these are really easy to get and it holds so much footage. When I'm shooting at 4K 60, I have a few hours of runtime just on this one card. And all you need is just a nice little CFast reader. These aren't too expensive and it's USB-C, super easy to use. And I know a lot of people are really intimidated by the file sizes of the Komodo. And yes, that is true. Like when I come back from a shoot and I offload my footage, oftentimes it's about like over hundred gigs. It's, you know, it's a lot of footage, but I think it's really important to get kind of like a RAID system. So right here I have the Thunder Bay 8 and this thing is about 13 terabytes. And if you're a cinematographer and editor, you already know how important storage is because I mean, you don't wanna be just keep dumping stuff on your desktop and even these little SSDs are kind of annoying to use. So for that reason, I would really recommend just getting a nice big RAID system. And ever since I got this, I'm not really scared of Komodo footage at all. I mean, I have so much space left on this. I have so much footage on there already. And if I put more, I could just delete it later. So yeah, that's really important to get if you wanna work with a true cinema camera because you're gonna be having to deal with a lot of files, a lot of big files. So yeah, it's really important to get a nice big RAID storage system. All right, sweet. So we just went over the media the Komodo uses and also the storage solution I recommend for you guys. Next, we're gonna go over another reason why people might be scared about upgrading to the Red Komodo 6K. And that reason is they're scared that their computer is not strong enough to handle the files of the Red Komodo. And at first I had the same problem. I have the Intel i9 MacBook Pro and my computer can't really handle natively the Red files. It's really slow, it gets really choppy. However, recently I found a really good workflow hack to get around this. So if you're using Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve, they offer a really good program called the Proxy Generator, and it literally comes with the free version and studio. I didn't even know I had it on my computer this whole time. It was literally just sitting there in the applications folder. So all you do is just open up the little program, and all you have to do is just drag in the folder where your red clips are, and you choose what kind of proxies you wanna make. You can make like 10-bit proxies, 8-bit, and after you do that, it automatically generates a folder within that folder in the red clips, and it automatically links everything. So it makes working with proxies really easy. Before this, I was kind of intimidated by proxies too. I was like, oh, I don't wanna make proxies. They're kind of annoying to make and you have to do all this work to link it. But using the Blackmagic proxy generator, it's extremely easy to use because it's just so plug and play. Because after you generate the proxies, which might take around like 30 minutes, depending on how much footage you have, it automatically links it within Resolve and it's super easy to use. And ever since I used proxies, I can literally scrub through the footage like it's butter and it's so easy to use on my Mac. The only downside is when you're working with proxies is the quality gets a little bit worse. However, you can literally just turn off proxies to do some color grading and then turn it back on when you wanna edit more. So, so I would highly recommend working with proxy files if you're worried that your computer is not strong enough to handle the red files because lately I've been working with a lot of red footage and the proxies have literally saved my life and it makes editing so much more fun, so much easier. So I would highly recommend working with the Blackmagic proxy generator. 
All right, next, we're gonna talk about the different codecs that the Red Komodo 6K offers. So the Red Komodo offers two main codecs. You can either shoot in Apple ProRes RAW or in R3D RAW. And me personally, I would highly recommend shooting in Red RAW because shooting in Red RAW, it offers you so much flexibility in post to work with. For example, if you feel like your shot is a little bit too hot, a little bit too overexposed, you're able to change that in post and you can really change your image so much. And I think that's what makes this camera so awesome. All right, so now that we've gone over all the technical stuff about the Red Komodo, next we're gonna talk about the image out of it. I mean, I feel like that's the main feature of the cinema camera that we should talk about. And I think the Red Komodo has the best image out of any camera I shot on. I think it has a really nice textured look to it because I've shot so much on Sony's and I feel like Sony's feel really flat. Like there's not too much character to it. It just feels really sharp. It feels kind of clinical. However, the Komodo, it really does have a textured cinematic look. I recently did a shot at the San Francisco Conservatory of Flowers, which is a really cool like tropical greenhouse and there's so many cool plants in there. And after looking at the footage, I think it just looks so awesome. Like I feel like the greens are really deep. The colors are a lot more rich and it has this really cool like textured look to it. It's kind of hard to describe. You're going to have to look at the footage, but compared to my Sony, it's literally like night and day. Like the Komodo just has really nice green tones and like it has a really nice film grain to it as well. And it's just a really truly cinematic look to it, honestly. And another thing I really like about it is the highlight roll off. Like when you're shooting on Sony's, when you get a really hot spot on the face, it, like it looks way too bright compared to the shadows. Like you really need to use diffusion if you're shooting on a Sony. However, when you're shooting in harsh sunlight on the Komodo, as long as you have an ND filter, the highlights look really pleasing. Like we were shooting this model out in the direct sunlight and just by having my two to five stop VND, I was able to get a really nice exposure on your skin tones and the skin tones just look absolutely amazing. For that reason, if you're doing a lot of like beauty shots, um, filming a lot of people, I think this is a really good camera to get because you don't even need diffusion. You don't really need someone to hold the balance. As long as you have that correct ND, you can get a really nice exposure on the skin tones with this camera. All right guys, so in conclusion, I think the Red Komodo 6K is an absolutely amazing cinema camera. And if you're thinking about upgrading to it, I would highly recommend it over any of the other options mainly because the image is just so beautiful. It has a really nice textured look, has really good highlight roll off, it has really nice deep rich colors, especially in the green tones. These past few months, I've been really trying to understand the Komodo and really trying to utilize it to its fullest potential. I've been doing a ton of spec ads lately and I've been doing a lot of editing and color grading of the red footage and I feel like I'm finally starting to understand the difference in the image between a true red cinema camera versus sony mirrorless cameras and honestly the difference is night and day so if you're someone that really cares about the image quality really is interested in color grading and interested in getting the most cinematic image out of their camera i would highly recommend upgrading to a true cinema camera like the red komodo 6k so thank you guys so much for tuning in if you guys like this video please hit that like button hit that subscribe button it really helps me out and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.